Hey guys, this is a Yamaha AN200 and I thought I'd show you this video today. Mine's got a little problem with the data encoder, so we'll get to that in a sec, but maybe for those who don't know much about these, this is a about 16 to 18 year old bit of digital technology and, the, and it boasts the analog physical modeling card of the PLG150-AN. It's a basically half of the voices of the Yamaha AN1X synthesizer. Um, it does boast some extra features though. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but it does actually have a feature called a cross mod or cross modulation. And it also has um, four parts across here which you can access that uh, the three of them are the AWM2. Uh, synthesis engine so you can access drum parts and other various tones from that. However, this video is not about the features of this and what it can do. It's going to be more about the repair. I believe this is actually quite a common problem um, and this might actually be quite useful for those who own the little sister version of this which is the DX200. Pretty much exactly the same and you'll see a a photo pop up now. The layout is the same buttons everything except just the text. Inside under the hood the DX200 has a PLG150-DX card and it emulates the old DX7 FM since. But today we'll do the AN and um, I'll just plug this in and I'll just go through really what the, the big problem is with this. So let's grab power, turn it on, and just wait for it to boot up. So yeah, um, I know absolutely nothing really about synths and soldering and things like that, so for those of you who think, wow, this guy's knowledgeable, I'm not, I know nothing, I think you guys just shouldn't worry too much about this sort of stuff, it's very easy to pick up. Um, later on we'll go through you know some basics of what to what to do when you do have to repair some gear. I mean these things are now out of warranty and they have been for many many years and a lot of us like to hung, hold on to our old gear so what do we do when we've got a problem like this? You can see I'm twisting this knob and it's literally just going crazy it's not going up and I'm actually just moving it clockwise and you'll see it goes down the whole point of this is when you move the knob clockwise, it should increment by one on every click. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's clicking as I'm turning it. And you can see that number there is actually not even moving. If I put pressure sort of to the top left, around sort of 10, 11 o'clock on a clock face, and push down, you'll see it actually behaves as it's supposed to. So that tells me that this is a physical problem. It's definitely not. A software firmware issue it's not a logic problem so I've ordered an original part from Yamaha and I like to get originals if I can because that way I know I'm putting exactly what's supposed to go and you can see it's a data encoder it features um, three pins and we'll get this out and we'll, we'll open it up later I've got a spare one as well just in case I screw this up because like I said before I have no idea what I'm doing I'm not an electronics engineer or anything like this. I'm not an approved Yamaha repairman. I don't have to worry because I'm not going to avoid any warranties. But relatively simple this job should be to get into here and replace this. So let's open it up and have a quick look inside. Obviously we'll turn the power off first. And we really are going to open this up. Now, I don't know about you guys, but it's a little bit scary when you've got a bit of electronics and it's not behaving properly. So don't chuck it in the tip or sell it on eBay as broken. You never know, it might actually be something that you can fix. So I'm just going to speed the video up for this part because I'm sure you don't want to see me unscrew all of these screws. Okay, so that's all the screws out of the bottom. 
there's no screws hidden under these rubber feet. Sometimes manufacturers will put screws underneath there. So if you do find it hard to get things apart, sometimes you'll find that you have to lift these up. Okay, so we're gonna turn it back over. And that plate should just fall off. And you can see all it is, it's actually just a metal plate. So there's nothing to worry about that. So we'll put that aside. And let's have a look inside. So you might remember at the start of the video I was talking about how it has a PLG 150-AN card. So there it is there. That's the actual synthesizer. And you can see that these are built as a plug-in synthesizer and you'll notice too that there's actually a plug-in connector here. We are going to need to get underneath all of this circuitry here because all of the knobs and encoders and everything are right on the other side as you can see. So there'll be a controller board underneath this that we need to access. So you had a good look at the PLG board, let's keep going and I'll fast forward the video again to try and get through. When you're pulling screws out too, it's it's probably a good point to try and keep the screws that belong to the components together and keep them in a place where you'll know you can find them. finding that I need to undo this PLG board. I noticed too there's a screw missing. It's not a screw missing as such though because there's actually nothing underneath here to hold it down. So these boards are used in multiple Yamaha synthesizers. I believe for example you can actually put a PLG 150AN in a Yamaha CS6X. Okay, so now that's actually coming up. So there's the daughter board there, and there's the controller board there. So I probably can just leave that connected. There's no reason why we can disconnect that. But as we go through, we'll need to disconnect a lot of these connectors that are on here. And when you're disconnecting these cables, it's actually a lot easier than you think. Okay, so I'll leave that daughter board connected. There's no need for me to disconnect that, but you can disconnect it. And here's the controller board here. And you can see that's the back there, all the actual physical connectors. So this will actually have op amp and firmware controllers. And there's also um, a battery here. Sometimes these batteries go flat too. So it's a good idea when you get these out to test them with a multimeter and see if the charge of the battery is still okay because it's actually common for electronics for batteries to fail. The battery just holds the memory, that's all it does. Okay, we're going to pop that aside as well. A little bit of room on my table to the right of me here. Alright, so we've still got another board underneath here that we need to get out. now. I don't know if you notice here, but there's a bit of gunk on the board here. Now, if I ever do come across dirt or something, I mean, this stuff's pretty old. I always get some isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. Maybe it was made by a guy called Phil, so he called it isopropyl. I don't know. But let's just put a little bit of that on a Q-tip or a earbud or whatever you want to call them. And we'll just give it a little clean and see if it comes out. It looks like it's just a bit of oxidization of the board. And just get it in there around that corner. It's actually all gone. And you can see, I don't know if you can see that or not, let's try and See that colour just there? 
that was what we just got off that board just then. So it left a little bit of residue of fluff behind. I'll just drop it off. If you do need things like tweezers, are always handy. Still haven't got to where we need to get to yet. Now the next part of this is that we actually need to get underneath this board and you can see this board is fairly old, the sticky of these cables are actually starting to come up now. And probably the next in the next 10 years they will they will all just completely lose their stick. What we're going to need to do now is actually we don't need to pull all these little caps off. So let's do that. If you want to, you can be careful about which one goes where, so you can pop them off in an order where you remember which way they go back on. So I might move these out of camera just Got a little bit more room, you can't see in the camera, but just on the top of the table here, just get them out of the way. And I'm keeping them in the same order that I'm popping them off because I don't know, maybe it's the OCD in me, maybe it's the right thing to do. Hey, like I said, nobody told me. All right, so we've popped all these caps off. I believe all of these buttons should actually just pop through as we pull it off, but those will definitely hold it on. So we definitely need to take them off. I mean, while you're at it too, just check while you're in here, if there's gunk in these underneath here, just check and just, if you need to, give it a clean because some of these older synthesizers, they can get, like, especially if you buy them secondhand, they can get quite grubby and it's never a problem to just clean them while you're there. All right, pop it back over and let's keep going. We've got a number of screws to get rid of here. So I can fast forward again. We're getting close. I think there might be one more over here. Sorry if I'm frustrating anyone who knows what they're doing. Like I said before, I have absolutely no idea. I'm sure you guys who are electronic boffins out there are thinking to themselves, oh my god, this guy knows nothing. He knows nothing. Now I've got a feeling I might need to disconnect that. I actually think that might be part of the LCD display. It's possible. But it definitely feels like it needs to come out. So we'll just very carefully. These are like a little ribbon connector, so we'll just pop that out. And I feel this is actually probably going to lift out now. There you go. She's out. And yeah, it was. It was part of that display. And you can see underneath here, it's actually really, really clean. Um, the video camera may or may not pick it up, but there's literally no dust or anything in there. It's actually really clean. Very happy with that. These are all the little buttons that I was talking about before, that poke all the way through. And they're all pretty clean as well. So, which was which? Hmm. Now I'm gonna say, that's the that's the LCD, LED screen side, sorry, LED, LCD. Let's get it right. If I turn that over, that is our suspect data encoder there, that one. And in fact, you can see with the layout, it definitely is that one there. Okay, so we're going to, need to put this aside. And we're going to need to literally desolder or unsolder this part. 